everybody, I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, are my guys Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And this will be a little bit different uh, of an episode for Believe in Colts because this is the bye week for the Indianapolis Colts, the week 14 bye week. So we're going to go through a little bit about, um, obviously, what you do, um, what players do, things of that nature during bye weeks. And then we're going to do a prediction for the uh, games of the week 14 slate. Uh, so Gerard, uh, how have you been this week? I haven't even asked you that. How's, how's, how's everything been going for you so far? You know, same old routine. I'm still a routine type guy, you know, so everything's been going well, controlling what I can control and, uh, trying to stay in a positive vibrations and all those things. And, uh, you know, just living life one day at a time. How about you guys? Rodney? I am good. Uh, despite you know, what, ha <laughs> what happened Sunday, uh, it's a new day. Uh, and so, man, I'm, I'm all smiles, man. And uh, as you see uh, in a new environment back in uh, Philly, uh, in my home, wife and I decided to just come back here for the week. Uh, what's interesting, yeah, for me, I, I normally don't travel anywhere during the bye week. I like to just sit still and, you know, rest and, restore my mind and, and kind of dedicate my time elsewhere. But uh, it just was fitting to get back into the house. Uh, haven't been here in some time and uh, also, you know, got some uh, charitable efforts that we have going on. So this was perfect time before, man, but all is well. Uh, how you doing, Lawrence? Basketball is back and bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends on Bet Online. And as your continued source for all your sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join. Receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Well, I'm doing, I uh, have to live, you know, dealing with life and, the, and its situations. Obviously, my uh, watching the game uh, this past Sunday night, um, that was a roller coaster. Uh, but and then last night, got to watch another game. And then today, I was really excited about, and still am excited about, talking football with you guys. Every Tuesday, I'm excited about coming on here and talking football with you guys. Uh, but really, my biggest question, since this is the bye week, and as you said, Rodney, you're you're in Philly right now. Uh, what's going on with you this week? Or is this a decompression time? Is this a, um, a film study time? Is this, is this a time where you're just reaching out to help the community? Yeah, for me, uh, normally this is a time to, to kind of step away from ball, uh, especially at this late, <laughs> uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? In the season, you know, normally the, the best bye weeks happen around that week eight, week nine, but oh, we man. had... Yeah, we had a, a little later by than than the rest, and so for me, it's just really, really just taking a, a second, uh, remove myself, man, and 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 focus my attention elsewhere. You know, one of course, with my wife, spending some quality time with her, uh, then you know, dedicating uh, my time to our foundation. We have a few events that we're doing and, and putting on here uh, in Philly, so very excited about that to be able to help out some family and then you know you can't forget about yourself and so some some self-care and uh decompress and do some of the things that i want to do uh just because my time is usually so devoted to uh my profession and ensuring that you know i'm at my best every sunday and uh there you know for my team and so this week allows me to kind of uh, get away and, and put some attention on other areas of my life outside of football. All right. Gerard, what, when you were playing, what did you use your bye week for? 
Uh, similar. Uh, normally we would have some some foundation events that uh you know we would try to attend or try to uh to to do, and then uh I'm a homebody, you know, so I'm I'm similar to Rodney. I don't like to move, especially when I got you know things you know that I'm doing in the current moment as far as my job. You know, normally in the off season is when I want to travel and do all those type of things. So uh for me. And Rodney can attest to it. When when you're playing a professional sport, everything that you do uh, during that time is dedicated to your job. You know, I'm talking from the things you eat to what time you go to sleep, when you can hang, when you can't. Like everything is like, no, nah, I got to go to work. Uh, so whenever we used to have a bye week, you know, I used to, you know, do some self-care things like Rodney attests to. And then I used to let my wife you know, have her week to kind of tell me whatever it is she wants me to do or where she needs me to be or, you know, give her time to uh, kind of have some self-care as well. I mean, we have kids and uh, people don't understand the uh, sacrifices the wives make, uh, you know, when you're in this profession. I mean, they're with the kids 24 seven and, you know, they're trying to make sure that, you know, everything is is right for the husband and right, uh, you know, for the job and all that. So whenever we used to have a break, break it was my time to kind of return the favor you know spend some quality times with the kids spend some quality time with the wife and just do whatever she tells me to do you know become a yes man for a week and uh you know and just try to you know get my mind back you know focused and you know ready to you know finish the year off how, however we needed to finish the year off see i feel like you know, both of you guys have very similar, you know, dealing with all, all uh, your bye week in a very similar way. But I feel like there's some guys out there that like devote like 100% of their time to football. I feel like Peyton Manning is one of those guys that probably during the bye week was like still sitting there watching film and prepping, you know. Uh, do, do you know anything about that, Gerard? I mean, I mean, during the during the bye week, some teams, uh, you know, some coaches will just give you the week off. I mean, when you think about, you know, Rodney and their situation, they're playing an extra week. It's 17 games now. And, uh, you know, they didn't get their bye week until now. So yeah. they, they need, you know, more days than normal. But let's say the bye week was, you know, week seven, week six. You would have practiced, you know, for at least, you know, two or three days. And then they would have let you have an extended weekend, uh, you know, to come back and get ready for. So um, you even though we step away from ball, you're not – totally stepping away from ball i mean you're still gonna you know watch a little bit of film here or there or you know go over notes here or there but some guys don't have anything else going on in their lives but football so you know peyton was one of those guys you know peyton was football 24 7 you know so people kind of expected him you know, to be, you know, locked in with film study and all that type of stuff. But even Peyton takes time out for himself and for his wife and for his kids as well. So uh, everybody got their own way of how they handle their time off. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what you think is best for you and your situation. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's the biggest thing is what works for you. And as Gerard said, man, I, I've learned uh, that there, there's no way I could see myself <laughs> going on a vacation during the bye week because for me when i go on my vacation like there is no point of return right <laughs> i'm not I, oh, I don't no question i don't want to tease myself knowing man i'm counting down the days i gotta go back <laughs> on sunday I, I i'd rather just say that for the off season yep. you know what i'm saying i've done all of my work I, I the season is completely over and we have as much time as we please and want to have um and so i but i do know several guys that are like man you know i'm out to the nearest uh island right uh mm. but that works for them right they that's how they make sure that their mental and state of mind is strong enough to come back for however many however many weeks remain in that season to make sure they're there for that team and, they're, and they stay committed and true to you know what I'm saying, the, the cause at hand. So uh, I've seen it all, and I feel like for me, this is just what works. And as Gerard said, my wife, she's accustomed to what we do, even though she'll try to throw in, she'll try to throw it in. <laughs> what about a quick trip here? And I'm like, man, you already know. You know like how we get down. But you do have to make sure that you get them their time because they, they do sacrifice and put in a lot um that people do not see man it, it helps 
uh, guys like Gerard and I out a lot uh, because of what they do behind the scenes. So much respect to all all my ladies out there, you know, holding mm. it down. Absolutely. So big news just came out. Uh, ESPN um, just released the first interview. Andrew Luck finally sat down with somebody uh, and and discussed the whole situation of his retirement and everything since then. Um, you know, what he's been doing since then, why he's not returned, why he doesn't plan on returning. He's uh, at peace with himself. Uh, Gerard, I guess you, you might have had a, a chance to kind of overlook a little bit about that. Any, any mm -hmm. thoughts about what you read there? No, nah, man. I mean, it was it was exactly, uh, you know, what I kind of expected his reasons to be. I mean, everybody knew what type of player Andrew was heading to be and who, who he already had became. I mean, he was a great player in this league, you know, top three, top five type quarterback in this league. And everybody know his trajectory. He was, you know, on his way to a Hall of Fame type career. Uh, but, you know, being his teammate as his rookie year, I mean, you, you knew immediately from the first conversation you had with Andrew that, you know, he's just a special human being and you knew that football really wasn't the thing that was going to define him on on who he was as a human being. I mean, when you talk to him and you hear some of the conversations and the things that he was interested in and, you know, just the knowledge that he had as a rookie, I was just like, man, this dude is going to be the dang president or the, you know, he's going to be running this organization at one point just because he was so just beyond his years. Uh, so just to kind of go over that article and, and – see that he's truly happy and he's found peace and you know he he's becoming the person that you know he's always dreamed of becoming and he's not necessarily letting football you know be you know what people view him as uh i'm, I'm happy for him because he seems like very happy i mean at one point in the article he talked about working for uh like a ski company you know, just, you know, I'm just going, you know, he loves skiing. That That's his thing. Like he loves skiing and he was just going to start, you know, retire from football and just work for a ski company and just vanish and disappear, you know? So to see him kind of show and tell people some of the things that he's interested in and some of the things that he likes to do that has nothing to do with football, just lets you know, man, I mean, you can't get mad at a guy. So I hope, I hope if it, for the Colt fans, you know, they can find some peace because if you're upset at somebody with finding peace within themselves and finding true happiness from within themselves, I mean, you got a problem yourself. It don't matter if he was the starting quarterback for your team and won eight Super Bowls and just quit the day after. Uh, if if he quit because he was truly trying to find happiness, man, you got to be happy for him. I mean, I, I've seen him over the years just pop up at, you know, Little League games and speak to the kids. And, you know, he's around Indy. So if you look up, you might see him. It's just the, that he blends in so well with normal people now that you might, just might not know that he's even in the area. So just to, just to know that he's truly happy and he found, you know, whatever he was looking looking for within himself i mean i'm happy for him you know he's a he's a special human being i i believe that as well i think that you know uh he was talking he was talking about things that brought him joy you know he loves mm. bicycling uh you talked about skiing he's out fishing now with his kids you know yep. he just just whether he's with himself or with friends he's just he likes going out and fishing and, and things of that nature and I, I did read a part in there that kind of did kind of hit me in a way where he was talking about the pressure of the fans in the organization expecting mm. him to bring a Super Bowl and he himself felt like he wasn't going to be able to do it mm. you know and 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 to retire in that situation was more freeing for him in that mm. aspect and I, I I get that you know because if you've already at a point in your life where you're not happy and you know that your life is not going in the trajectory that you want and you want to go that way. You got to just get rid of the, the stress and the pressures as well. So uh, I'm happy for him. I hope that he has a long and wonderful life uh, with him and his family. And um, you know, as you said, if, if you're still upset over him uh, retiring, the way he retired, I don't put that on him. Like I said, that, that's on Shefty. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's straight up. Uh, yeah. that, that's not that's not Luck's fault, right there. Any thoughts you got on uh, Andrew Luck there, Rodney? 
No, nah, man, I had the pleasure of going against uh, Luck uh, several times and, you know, always respected and admired his game uh, and style of play and, and know, you know, what type of leader he was, a uh, guy that put it all on the line, man, for, for his, for his team and for that, for this organization here. And so I have nothing but uh, respect for someone like that. I heard nothing but great stories about Luck and still well-respected from obviously from Gerard, but the trainers mm-hmm. within the facility and people who come in contact with him, you know, on the team, man. And uh, just wish him nothing but the best. You know, all you want to see, like Gerard said, is, is for him to be happy. And I think we all must accept that and uh, respect, you know, his decision. It's great to hear, uh, you know, from him now and, mm-hmm. and kind of give people an insight and in, in what he was going through because often I feel like a lot of uh, fans and people outside of the sport don't uh, really know what us players endure uh, on a daily basis, you know what I'm saying? And to go through the amount of injuries that he suffered, to, to bounce back, uh, multiple times is not easy to do. Um, and, and for many, you know, they they would, uh, you know what I'm saying, pick up and leave, man, and, and quit. And, and, and just the stressors that, that exist, you yeah. know, within the sport. So you always have to keep your mental tight. And, you know, he was at a point where uh, he wanted to – he was no longer happy. Uh, and the, the game and the sport was no longer – uh, fulfilling for him, right, and, and and brought on that same feelings that he had when he first started. And I'm a true believer in that. You know, I've always yeah. told myself as well, like when that feeling goes, for me, it, it's time to walk away uh, because the the game itself is is too, um, it's too you know brutal and 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 in mm-hmm. the way that we play, and your mind has to be in the right space. Um, and, and that wouldn't be fair to not only myself, but anybody else involved. So uh, much respect to him and wish him all the best moving forward. Yeah. And uh, a, another part of that story that I read is he, he talked about how his therapist helped him, you know, realize that. And that's a big thing, man. The, the, the mental side of things, people don't understand the pressures that, you know, these guys face week in, week out to perform. And it's literally a pressure to perform. And people don't understand that that'll take a toll on your body. You're talking about, you know, a livelihood. This is how these guys feed their family. This is how we feed our family. So if you're going out there and you're not performing at the level that your job is asking you to perform or the level that the fans and Mm. everybody in the city is asking you to perform. And then all of a sudden you go on the internet and you see the media bashing you, you see the fans bashing, you see all those things. People just, you know, think, professionals are able to take it because they're making x amount of money and they're doing all these things and they don't understand the true like uh i don't even know the right word i'm listening the humanistic uh, side they're the like, humanistic, humanistic star like, like that's exactly we just warriors and like that's it you know yeah no and, that, and that's exactly that's exactly what it is i mean these guys are literally the same human beings as somebody that's working a different job every day somebody like yourself lawrence that you know uh does the podcast and the media thing for a living it's just it's the the same type of people but quick story with andrew because even though i'm happy for him and all that boy he was gonna be one of the best quarterbacks that probably ever played his rookie his rookie year man we're in training camp and it's like the second day of training camp. And we might have picked Andrew off six or seven times wow, uh, that day before we can get back to the locker room. I'm talking like before I can sit down in my locker, he had already grabbed me and Antoine Bethea and was just like, hey, what did y'all see? What do I need to do? How did you know this pass was coming? How did you know this was going? Like just asking Mm -hmm. us, like interrogating us about what we were doing on defense to help him out. And I remember Reggie Wayne. I remember Reggie Wayne coming up like maybe the fourth or fifth day of a training camp and was just like, he the one, like he is the one, you know? So he was going to be a special football player and have a hell of a career. But like I said, if that's not going to bring happiness to your life, you got to do what you got to do as a person to find that happiness. And that's what he did. It was a bold move, but if it works for you, you got to be selfish in that moment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, hey, I think we're, go ahead. Anything? No, I was saying it's, that's that 2012 class, man. Shout out, yeah. Shout out to us. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, there you go. Oh, one of few still holding it, holding it down, <laughs> holding it down. <laughs> well, there's that, there's that Russell Wilson fellow over there at Denver, but you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gilly, yeah, Gilly's in the class too. He's in there the, you he's go, in the right? Yeah, yeah. Old heads, old heads. Yeah. So, uh, let's let's get into the week fourteen uh, slate for this Thursday. Well, as this actually releases, it'll be tonight. Uh, the Raiders go to the Rams. Uh, neither of these teams have been performing this year to expectations. Uh, the Raiders are five and seven. The Rams are three and nine. Gerard, what's your picks for this game? Uh, I got the Raiders. Um, and I got the Raiders by, I'm going to say the Raiders by 10. I'm going to say the Raiders 35 Rams 25 type, type of game. But I think the Raiders are going to put on points. I think Matt Stafford's out now uh with 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 the rams so they're struggling obviously but uh i think the raiders are finding their groove you know towards the end of the year to where you know they're, they're they'll a, they'll be able to finish these games out and uh i got them winning by 10. rodney uh i got the raiders i don't have a score for you but i i like the raiders that's my pick uh, all right all right you know if you don't want to drop a score that's perfectly fine just, <laughs> just give us who you think's gonna win that's yeah. gonna be I, I got the picks. raiders all three of us got the Raiders. Uh, the way yeah. they've been playing the last few weeks, ever since Derek Carr called out the team, you know, after the game against you, Rodney, uh, <laughs> and the rest of the Indianapolis Colts, and he called out the team during during the press conference afterwards. They've been playing yeah, with a, a different, yeah, different kind yeah. of energy out there. Uh, Sunday, we got the Jets at the Bills. That's going to be interesting. Seven five Jets versus the nine and three Bills. This uh, one for this one for Rodney. Yeah. I got the Jets. I got the Jets, <laughs> yeah. and that yeah. will let people know uh, they are playoff no ready. <laughs> yeah, if they yeah they come away with this one for sure. Uh, there, there's no there's no chance at Bills. At Bills. And uh, I like I like um I like Buffalo. I got Buffalo unless six feet of snow drops out there in Buffalo and they have to play like in New which York. It might. You know? which, which it might. <laughs> it might. It could. It could. <laughs> um, we got the five and seven Browns going to the eight and four Bengals. This will be the second game for Deshaun Watson back this year after, you know, the two years being out. Uh, what you got there, Gerard? I think Deshaun Watson will show some of his heroic type playmaking skills that uh that we were used to seeing from him but I still think the Bengals uh win this game I think you know them coming off a Super Bowl loss and them being in the position they are right now uh this late in the season uh they're trying to prove people you know that you know they can get right back to that bowl and this they, they can't slip up any type of games especially not versus the Browns so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Bengals get this one okay Rodney I gotta go with the Bengals myself Okay. All right. I'm going to go against the grain. I, I I think the Browns might surprise a few people in this game, especially uh, going into Cincy. This is this is the Battle of Ohio. So the, it'll be interesting to watch this game. But I, I think the Browns might actually surprise and, 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 and squeak away with a victory if they can just lean heavily on their run game and their, and their pass rush. Yeah. Um, the next game that we got on the line, the ten, uh, one 10 and one Texans goes – to the other Texas state and faces the nine and three Cowboys. Uh, does, does anyone think that the Texans have a shot here? There, Gerard? Nah, Cowboys, <laughs> Cowboys, big Cowboys, big Rodney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you yeah, ain't, you nah. ain't calling an upset here. <laughs> nah, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> not this one. All right. All right. I guess we're all three on the Cowboys after, after what we just saw this past Sunday night. Um, the ten and two Vikings go to the five and seven Detroit Lions. Mm. I like Man, the Vikings. That could get interesting. I like the Vikings. I like the Vikings. I'm going. I'm going. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to underdogs on this one. So you know you gotta have you gotta have one, and and I'm gonna go with the Lions uh, at home. They pull up a, a big upset uh, versus versus the Vikings. If there is a team out there that the Vikings face that has an offense that can keep up score wise, it's Detroit. Jared, Jared yeah. Goffman having a decent year this year too. You know, yeah, quiet, quietly. And, mm -hmm. and that yeah. defense gives up. Uh, they give up yardage. 
Uh, I do. Yeah. They make they do get timely turnovers, but they're they're uh, you know pretty. Uh, I think that one of the at the bottom when it comes to uh, yardage uh, given up. So we'll see how it plays out. But yeah, I, I Detroit at home. This could be one of those weird eighty point games. You know, the in, in all honesty, the way I see it, uh, uh, this it's a coin flip for me in this game. Uh, I understand that. Uh, I, I think the Lions will put on a better show than what, you know, the the ratings and a lot of people are going to say. Uh, the next game is going to be a little bit tighter, though. Uh, you got the 10-1 and one Eagles going to the New York Giants. Um, I want to say uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles. But I do, I do believe, like how Rodney said, how it's always one underdog that wins. I can definitely see New York you know, shocking the world or shocking people and, and winning this game. But I'm going to go with the Eagles. I'm going to say they mature enough to to handle the position that they're in. All right. Rodney? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to go. I'm going to go against the whole squad. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say the Giants find a way to, to get this done, man. Sa- Saquon put it in the hands of 2-6, uh, play good defense. And mm. lean on that home crowd. Oh, that's a shock. I did not expect that. I'll tell you, I thought this was a slam dunk for the Eagles on your side. But wow. Uh, I, I, again, this is a this is a, another coin flip for me, uh, especially since it's being at the Giants. I think this is going to be a really good game. I think it can go either way. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and lean Eagles. But yeah, the, I could see this game being a very close one as well. It gets tricky, man. Mm-hmm. I just in the past just playing the division opponent, especially the Giants, like the Eagles, even the year of the Super Bowl, like it was just something about them. Like they, I don't know, they just find a way to hang in there. Um, and the way they're playing this year, I don't know. I just got a, got a feeling it might be surprising NYC. Mm-hmm. A lot of divisional games this week. Uh, we got Baltimore, 8-4, and four, heading to Pittsburgh, who is 5-7. and seven. Uh, I don't think uh, Lamar is going to play this week. And uh, I know Pittsburgh offense is not, you know, performing at the level that you would expect. But I do think Pittsburgh defense and, you know, with the whole Pittsburgh Raven rivalry, it just they play they play this game a little different. So I'm going to go with uh, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to go with Pitt. I'm going to go with Pitt. Wow. All right. Rodney. Yeah. Lamar Jackson factor is uh, is real. And Pittsburgh, we started it. They're a two-game winning streak. So I um, think I'm going to have to choose a terrible towel on this one. Ooh, <laughs> wow. That's that's something else. No, you, no Mike, one has Mike any Tom faith and... in Tyler Huntley? No, he's Mike. good. Yeah, I yeah. like him. I like him. I mean, I think he's good. But, you know, when you're the when the heart of your team is out, I mean, that that's a huge factor. That is yeah. a big factor, and and the Steelers, Steelers do have a legit defense that can cause problems for the offense. So, mm-hmm. I, I get why you guys are going with the terrible towels in Pittsburgh. Um, I think Baltimore finds a way, uh, even without Lamar. I, I think yeah. I think they're going to lean heavily on that on that running game, uh, obviously. And I, I've seen Tyler Huntley play really good games last year uh, when you know. Uh, Lamar Jackson was out. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out, but I, I'm going to go against the grain with you guys here, and I'm going to go with Baltimore. Uh, another divisional game. We got the four and eight Jaguars against the seven and five division leading Titans. Uh, I'm going to go Titans. I'm going to go Titans. Coming off a bad loss with the Eagles, they'll revenge themselves with a division win versus Jacksonville. Okay. <laughs> uh i think uh, i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna go with jacksonville okay all right is it is that more Where of that, a, is it it's in tennessee it is in tennessee mm. ah man Ooh, yeah I, i'm a, i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with tennessee since okay. it's in since it's in tennessee I mean, I we all have it. 
I might have uh, some some effects there. If it was in Jacksonville, I, I think I might say Jacksonville would pull it off. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, as as Colts, you know, fans and the schedule and 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 players and stuff, you're 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 hoping that Tennessee loses this game. You know, that way you could gain a game on them and maybe possibly somehow miraculously make a massive comeback at the end of the year and and, and get to the division. But I got Tennessee winning this one. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, another divisional. I mean, a lot, a lot of divisional games. Uh, like I said, nine and three Chiefs heading to the three and nine Broncos. I got the Chiefs. Chiefs. Oh, you ain't gonna ride. <laughs> nah, nah. 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 Russ, Russ can leave me out of the car on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the Chiefs as well. Uh, four and eight Panthers versus seven five Seahawks. Seahawks, Seahawks playing some good football. I, I I'll go with the Seahawks. Okay, Geno. Yeah, I like Seattle. I think we're all in agreement on that one. Then, interesting game coming up. Six and six, Buccaneers heading to San Fran. Ty Bowles defense hasn't been playing up to par. Like normally, but I don't. I don't like rookie quarterbacks versus veteran defensive coaches. Uh, I'm. A, I'm gonna go Tampa. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna pick San Fran. I'm gonna go San Fran as well. I still feel like there's enough enough talent over there. You know, with with Debo and McCaffrey and Kittle and all of them. I think they are able to to use the quick passing and the and the the RPO stuff that they got. The, the, the 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 different playmaking that Shanahan has, I think they were able to to get this get this victory going. Uh, then we got Miami heading to L.A. Chargers, almost at San Diego. <laughs> I I feel like um, I feel like L.A. is in like a well, not feel like they're definitely in a must win situation. And then Chargers just came off a bad loss, like where they didn't look good versus San Francisco. And it's is in LA, in LA. I wonder did they go? I, they're probably still on the West Coast. I bet they didn't go back to Miami, so they'll they'll be accumulated to the time change and all that. Uh, I'm gonna go Miami. Miami bounces back. They win. Oh, okay, Rodney. Uh, Miami for me. I got Miami as well. Uh, I just I I, I don't. I think two and well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm still gonna go with Miami though. Uh Monday, that's that's Sunday night football too. Uh Monday night football, last game. We got New England heading to Arizona. Six mm. and six versus four and eight. Somehow New England wins and Cliff Kingsbury and the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they you you'll start hearing rumors of people about to get fired. This will be the game that kind of Stamp that! Wow, mm. that's big. Yeah, <laughs> headlines right there. Oh <laughs> man, I have not seen much of like Arizona. I feel like to really know. Ah, uh, yeah, Bill Belichick after a tough loss, primetime game again. Patriots might find a way to to get to to come out victorious with this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Bill Belichick, mastermind gets it done. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. I think with the, the the way the Cardinals have been playing this year, uh, not living up to expectations. You talked about the Cliff Kingsbury thing already, uh, Gerard, and you know, with Bill Belichick being you know the mind that he is, he finds a way to win usually, even in the weirdest of ways, like. All right, I'm going to draw up this uh, kick return for a touchdown for the final play of the game. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I got I got New England here, um, and that is our picks for this week, uh, week 14 of the NFL schedule. Um, thanks, guys, for for spending the extra time uh, doing the picks with me, and I think that will do it. For this episode of Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And until next time, 
As usual, go Colts. Do you believe?